what's up guys welcome back to uh, another session i'm at a uh, new mark for me i'm down at Selzy. it's a lovely little place as you can see water on a big tide comes right up up there um i think the tide's about four or nine so i'll probably end up fishing at the top at some point tonight not sure what time uh, i'm planning on staying till to see how the session goes um, target species are mainly uh, black bream, smooth hounds, rays. Sorry, it's a hot one today, guys. Just finished setting my gear up. As you know, I like to get uh, my rods in the water first before I start all this camera stuff. I've got um, two Pompey Loop rigs on both of them. No, I haven't. I've got that on the left hand rod. Right hand rod, I've just got a two hook flapper. Both with uh, ragworm on at the minute, just old old bait. Once my squid and that's defrosted, I'll put some of that on. But yeah, sea's nice and calm. Fishing in between groins here. But yeah, let's see what we can catch. Right guys, those of you that are in my Facebook group, you would have seen that I found a cuttlefish um, yesterday, washed up. It was pretty fresh. Didn't have no smell apart from the usual fish smell. There it is, look. That's compared to the size of my tackle box lid. It was wrapped up, put in the fridge. So, you know, it's nice and fresh still. But my knife is blunt as anything, so I'm gonna take it over to my mate Pete. He's hopefully gonna cut it up. We'll get him to make a mess of things. <laughs> Be right back. Here we go, look, that's why I bought it up for Pete today. He likes to have black hands. Looks like a lovely place to fish here, guys. Pete's rods. We've got the Daiwa Supercasts, 14 foot. Lovely rods, these. All we need is some fish. It's just down there sorting the cuttlefish out. As you can see by the mess already. We've got the tentacles here which come out and grab the prey and pull it into its mouth. Then the smaller ones, there's a few there. Cuttlefish bone, if you find them on the beach, I'll be keeping that for my cockatiels. So, um, yeah, my rods are right down there. This ain't mine, Pete dropped it, just picked it up for him. So, yeah. There's big rocks down here. Beautiful. Someone else just there coming down to fish. Like I said, we're here pretty early. High tide's not for another four hours or so. Let's see how we get on. A big thank you to uh, Sean from Baitmate Solutions. Uh, he kindly sent me down, I've not got all the stuff with me, um, two of the Baitmate tools. This is the big one, I think it's the specimen one. Um, 
and there's a smaller one as well. He also sent me a hat, um, a towel, you know, like a rag. Um, so yeah, I was very happy with that. You know, just looking forward to um, finally getting to use one of these. So I'm just gonna get the mackerel. Just started to defrost now. I'll stick you on my head. Hopefully you can see. Get me knife. <clears throat> right. I've not used one yet, so this will be the first time giving it a go. Looks pretty straightforward. It's not the sharpest knife in the world, but there you go, that's not too bad of a fillet. Leave the other side on. <clears throat> Get my rig out. This is uh, an up and over short snood, about three foot or two and a half to three foot. Three O cox and raw surfing up tide hook. Right, so I don't want that whole piece. About that much, I think. So uh, you've got this little groove in the top, which I assume is where you stick your hook. I guess you've got two options. One is to just lay your bait over it and whip it on. But I think I'm gonna thread it on a little bit first. more don't like too much hanging off the end with mackerel not when I'm casting it anyway pull that just over the knot there and stick the hook over like that that's how I assume this is done and then what you're gonna do get your bait elastic and start whipping it. If you're not very good at presentation, this should help a lot. Use as much whipping as you want. Obviously once you slide this off, it should go tight. <clears throat> Tell you what, I'm gonna flip that. Make sure you uh, don't go over the hook point there. And keep the hook point nice and proud. Right, here we go. So that's the bait on there whipped on. I guess you just push it gently. Cool. There we go, it's coming off. Like that. There we go, guys. Well presented bait there. Slide these attractors down. There we are. When that's in the up and over, I'll just get a weight out quick. Like I said, it's an up and over. So we've got our snood length here. Just gonna clip that up over there, pull it down, and put the hook in that little groove of the splashdown. It's easier when it's on your rod. There we go. 
that's how that sits guys, that's how it casts out when it hits the water pops off that lays down and you got your rig there look that sits in the ground, long flowing trace nice for a hound, a ray, a taupe, anything like that so um, yeah, I'm just going to get this on Oh, been down here about three hours now guys, three and a half hours. It's uh, 10 o'clock. I've had one tiny little bite and uh, that's it. Got some fireworks going off in the background. It's a beautiful sunset. I've got the breakaway tip lights on for the first time. I don't really need them on yet, it's still fairly light but uh, yeah, I'm well impressed with them. They're nice and bright. Oh. Keep an eye on that a second. There's been a bit of weed around. Jesus Christ, made me jump. Been a bit of weed around, but um, not too bad. But if it's a blank, and then, uh, just means I got about for another session, doesn't it? Some nice houses around here, right on the seafront. Got Portsmouth uh, over there. I can see it. You probably can't. Spinnaker Tower with the red lights. I think it's going to have to be a. Um, my local Eastney Beach to try and catch me a fish. Not tonight, obviously, <laughs> but uh, it's the only place I've, place I've got confidence in at the minute. Like I said, Pete's down there. He's not had a bite. Got some fellas up there. Not heard nothing from them. But uh, yeah, it's still time. Here we go guys, two at ports of flute rig. Big ragworm there, big ragworm there. They're not the best now, they've been, well I've had them for a week, so. They're still alive just. You see the water now. Obviously I was down here to begin with. But the tide's right up there now. So to land a fish, Pete's down there, so he'll walk along and grab it for me, not that it's looking likely, but uh, yeah, it is what it is guys, that's fishing. There we go guys, you can see the uh, breakaway tip lights a bit better now, we'll stand up on this wall. I don't know how well that picks up on the camera, but... They're mega bright. Well happy with those. I think they're about £5.50 for one light. The batteries are about £3.50 for two. So they're not the cheapest things in the world, but they're supposed to last up to 90 hours. Um, so we'll see about that. Uh, the green is the best colour for... <laughs> Sorry, I just thought Pete had a fish. Um, green's the best colour, it's the brightest. Lasts the longest. Then it's blue and then red's the worst. So I've been told, it's what everyone seems to say. But yeah, still no fish. 